was that was like November. I believe, yeah, it was between Halloween and and uh, Christmas because we did the Exorcist one, and that was around. That was fun, man. That was actually that was back in September, wasn't it? September, October, because then you guys did a mm, Halloween episode uh, after that, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it was something like that. That was fun. I want to do that again. I, I, we got to do uh, that Civil War movie. Oh, yeah. I'm stoked <laughs> about it. I know. As soon as he said that, I was like, I, I watched the trailer. I'd never heard of it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm in. Oh, like, I this, saw, is a, I, this is a future biopic. Dude, I saw, I saw the, um, the trailer, and immediately was like, Scott, Kowalski, Keanu, we got to go see the theater. I'm like, we got to go to the movie theater. And we're gonna, in uniforms? In uniforms. <laughs> Cause what's it called? We're gonna go see the Dune movie, oh, the okay. new Dune, uh, in a couple weeks. And when we go to the theater, the dress code is um, you get we, we're wearing like Hawaiian shirts. Why? Because it's fucking in Dune it's, and, and, and the right. sand and everything I like that. You. So that's like the joke. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna try to get those like Dune popcorn buckets. Nice. You know what we're talking about? No. But it Dude, sounds cool. Uh, Lucas, I'm out of the up. loop. Just to be clear, <laughs> I'm so far. Even like the yeah. um, when I messaged you that one day about going to see Oppenheimer. Still haven't seen it. You haven't seen I'm it? I'm just going to wait to see it on Peacock. It comes out in like a week or something like that. So oh, I thought it was already out. It's not out yet? Not that I'm aware of. Mm. But yeah, I was going to. I was like totally far. I don't remember what happened. But like the day progressed and I was like, right. I just can't do it. I don't right. have eight hours in my schedule to go check that movie out. Right. No, Um. what's it called? Uh, here, Lucas, are you able to look up the Dune popcorn bucket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got to fix the display. Oh, okay. Um... But uh, no, so I was thinking for Civil War, what we should do, we should wear like like um, like camouflage shirts and shit, but then wear like the pink pussy hats. You know what I'm talking about? No. <laughs> you know, you know I told you I'm out of the loop. <laughs> this has been the pussy hats. I think those have been around for a lo- for a hot minute. Those have been around for a hot minute. But I just thought it'd be I thought that'd be super hilarious to wear. But um, no, I look back on the Exorcist episode. Like every once in a blue moon, yeah. For like the parts <laughs> where the circumcision, like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh my gosh, if we he, ever make like a trailer for Little Buddy Companion, that has to be that has to be in. Oh yeah, in the trailer, but yeah, that was the best. But what have you been up to, man? Because it's been a minute. Nothing working, and then I got fired, and then uh, like I said, I just trying to get my my ducks in a row. That really cold uh, day, there two couple days we had. In like mid January. Talking about the snow? Yeah, and it got like below zero. Right. I had a pipe burst, so I had to deal with that. And then uh, um, beyond that, I'm trying to actually sell my car to get <clears throat> a bigger vehicle to do, because I'm doing like gig work. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Amazon Flex actually pays pretty well. So kind of doing that in the interim to pay the bills. And then as soon as I kind of get some ducks in a row, basically, I planned on getting back to writing and mm-hmm. um, doing some of the endeavors that i had really but just haven't had a chance to yet because life right but nothing too exciting otherwise you know just, just hanging out just hanging living out, out living life yeah. hey man that's not that's not bad man i think um there's the popcorn bucket by the way hold on a second i don't know how i feel about that the the fleshlight popcorn bucket <laughs> 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 look at the dude's hand coming out look at the dude's hand coming out of the uh, oh my god you see that Whoever whoever did the marketing for this was a genius. Could you imagine getting ready to be intimate with that thing and then that hand pops out? You're like, what's going on? Whoever whoever designed that deserves like a raise because ev- uh, so many people are talking about the movie just because of the popcorn, the popcorn bucket. bucket. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. That's smart. And I don't know if you know the director Denis Villeneuve. Uh-uh. He did a he did Arrival, um, the first Sicario oh, film. Great movie. Um, he did Prisoners. He's um, he's like kind of on the same tier as like Christopher Nolan in terms of being like a very prestigious director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so funny that this prestigious director, his popcorn bucket for his movie is being equated to a fucking fleshlight. <laughs> <laughs> and so, right. so like I can't even imagine what it'd be like to be Denis Villeneuve and know that so many people are probably going to go see your movie just because of a picture they saw on Twitter. Of the of the popcorn bucket of of the popcorn bucket, but what's it called? Um, dude, we tried doing this like back in September, just me and you one on one. Capitalism. It like a, yeah, it was like a two hour long yeah podcast, and we talked about so much shit that, and obviously, you know, the drive took a took a dump. Yeah, I'm still bummed about that. Yeah, no, it was a good, it was a good conversation, man. Have you, have you delved into any of like the books or anything we talked about? No, and you know, every time I listen to one of the I got episodes, the one up there. 
Sapiens. Yeah, that's the one that yeah, I, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's like the only one. Yeah, that's the one that like sticks. I feel like you've brought it up a few times on the podcast. And every time you, you bring it up, I'm like by myself and I'm like, yeah, I got to read that. Dude, yeah, I convinced, I was at, a, I think I was at Target with a high school friend of mine. And, um, you know, he was kind of asking me like what my routine is, everything. I'm like, I wake up, read a book and everything. And he goes like, well, what books do you I said, if you're going to start anywhere. You gotta start with fucking sapiens. sapiens. Yeah, yeah, and he's not like a he's not like a super religious friend, you know. Because I have some friends that are so religious that every time I bring up the book, they think I'm speaking nonsense. Kowalski. I'm like, no, 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 not <laughs> Kowalski. Oh, yeah, sometimes Kowalski. I'm like, yeah, okay, you and Lord of the Rings. But what's it called? Um, what's it called? Uh, no, like I brought it up to my high school friend, and he literally, in the middle of Target, pulled out his phone, ordered it on Amazon, and it oh, showed nice. up the next day. Holy shit! You know, and then uh, he, he last time we spoke, um, which is, which is funny talking to somebody that's also read the book. Mm-hmm. You're like, have you gotten to replacement theory yet? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know like, oh, yes, 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 yes. Interbreeding theory, yeah. very good. Very Scholarly good. conversations. Ah, the singularity, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, there's it's uh. It's definitely a book I recommend everybody to read, especially if you are religious, mm-hmm. because <clears throat> it it doesn't really offer answers. It just sort of poses a lot of questions yeah. that I think is good for everybody to start to to wonder. Because mm-hmm. um, like being, I think being open to possibility is so imperative for right now in yeah. today's day and age instead of being so hardlined like no this is what it is and if yeah. you differ from that you know i i oppose you and this yeah. that and the other you know because i've gotten the heated arguments with friends about like this stuff and i tell yeah. them at the end it's like they're religious i'm not as religious and at the end of it i go guys i believe in god like yeah. don't get me wrong right. like i'm not saying like what you know what you believe in yeah is garbage right but what I am saying is, like, I think that there's, it feels like there's some level of hubris in us saying, oh, here's this book, and this is, all, whatever is in this book is 100% pure and true. Yeah. You know? Because even reading Sapiens, like, there's a whole part in Sapiens. I literally highlighted, not that, I bought that copy just for the, the studio. Oh, nice. Because I, I have a copy at home that I, like, wrote in yeah. and everything, and I have sticky notes. And there's a whole chunk of the book where I'm like, oh, this is just bullshit like i like i don't like i don't like i definitely don't believe this yeah because in the like the first like the first third of the book you know they i mean he literally starts from the beginning the dawn of man yeah. 2001 a space odyssey yeah he starts from you know how mankind you know began and you had these different subsects of, you know species of man mm-hmm. and the reason why us as homo sapiens dominated all other men is because of our ability to tell stories mm-hmm. and communicate and our belief in these stories is kind of what you know for example you go to a church and say there's a hundred people in that church and you only you only actually know 10 of those hundred people mm-hmm. but the reason why you could probably um you know if it ever came down to it bear arms with the rest of those 90 people is because you all believe in the same story yeah you know <clears throat> and so if if, if someone was threatening your beliefs and you had to stand up for it you know you could do so with you know upwards to a hundred people because mm-hmm. you guys all read the scripture you guys all understand the same exact thing yeah and if you have one guy telling you like this is how to interpret this you're all gonna interpret it that way right and so anybody that opposes that you know you don't have to know the other 90 people in order to you know like i said bear arms with them and be like you know fuck these other people yeah um yeah definitely which, you know, in, in the book, I read that, and I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense that, you know, because, I mean, like, like there, there's times, like, at work and everything where, you know, like, Kowalski will bring up something, you know, and then somebody else that, especially when he just started working with us, you know, somebody else would be like, oh, yeah, 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 this, you're talking about this, right? Mm-hmm. You know, or we just be in passing at a gig. And somebody that doesn't even work with us will be passing by and will hear what somebody says and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, this. Yeah. Like, there's that connection, right? And um, builds community. And um, which, hearing that, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can completely back that up. Right. Like, that makes genuine sense. Mm-hmm. And that so that's one theory of how we were able to dominate all other men. You know, another one is the reason, because, you know, you had, like, for example the Neanderthals, like, why aren't they around and everything? Yeah. And a lot of people say, like, oh, well, it's not that they're not around, it's that their ancestors are, or their, um, 
you know, their lineage is still around. Yeah. You know, because then that's where the interbreeding theory comes in. It's like, oh, we, it's not that we dominated, you know, other man. Mm-hmm. It's that we were interbreeding with them. And, you know, obviously now, I mean, further down, like we're so further down the line. Right. That you just don't visually see it. Yeah. You know, like you can't actually see evolution. Right. And it's even crazier because you read the book and like you'll read a sentence that'll 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 say like oh homo sapiens you know you know dominated you know neanderthals and you know all these other types of men are species of man and you know that's why there's you know there's only us and there's mm-hmm. homo sapiens like you read a sentence <laughs> like that you don't realize that you're actually reading like worth like a hundred thousand years or a million <laughs> right, years right yeah like in, a like, lot of packed, history yeah packed in one sentence right you know and so that's why the book is so it can be like really overwhelming at Mm -hmm. times you know but then i get to a part in the book where it literally starts talking about like our fucking genitalia and it's like the author goes it's not meant just for breeding and i'm like well based off of like how you were (laughs) pitching the whole first third of the book yeah and then this I'm like, oh, you're full of shit. I'm like, you know what? If you had, I'm like, if you had written this book 20 years ago, you would have not thought this way. Yeah. I guarantee you. Like, right. this really feels like a, like a sign of the times sort of statement you're making yeah. right here, as opposed to an actual original thought. Right. You know, you're appealing to an audience. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's where I was like, that's where I was like, oh well, you know, most authors are probably liberal. And yeah. Everything. Like, like, just rip this page out of the book. Exactly, Fuck man. That. Fuck that, dude. But no, I like, like, but that's the thing. And that's what I like about reading certain books is like, it also, it also shows myself that like, oh, I, I'm showcasing to myself that I'm not just going to absorb whatever bullshit you want to right. spout to me. Right. Like I can pinpoint when and where I see bullshit. Yeah. And Sapiens is a good, Sapiens is a very good, playground and sandbox to do that in Mm. um because again like there's so like it poses so many questions it's not trying to 100 except for where it comes to male genit and female genitalia yeah literally um but for the most part the book doesn't you know try to sell you 110 percent on things you know um and it in it in a it sort of questions like how you know, we view, like, for example, just men in general, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, when you, when you look back to, you know, like, uh, you know, kings of England and how they used to dress and wear, and, mm-hmm. you know, they were wearing, like, tights and essentially dresses, yeah. what women wear today, right? you know, and that was, like, looked at as the absolute pinnacle of masculinity. Yeah. And then now today it's suit and tie, yeah, nice the shoes. Well, not exactly. the opposite, but dude, yeah. it's literally like I like I forget who it is in the book, but it's literally like a picture of King George and fucking Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> right, right next to each other. Yep. Right next to each other, you know. And um and it's and again, this is another thing too that it sort of, you know, pokes I literally I literally mean pokes at religion, because I don't think it's trying to a hundred and ten percent I don't think it's trying to 100% discredit it right. at the same t- at the same time because again yeah. like you know he, like it's replacement theory it's interbreeding theory mm-hmm. none of this stuff is set in stone yeah um but you know it talks about like why like how like why you know priests and the pope like they like they can't have sex you know what i mean yeah. but you look at you know for example you look at chimpanzees you look at apes and everything what makes the dominant male in those communities is for the male to the literally brothers sleeping around, literally be able to dominate the hot whatever. Oh, yeah. I read a crazy book called oh, In the Shadow of Man hot by <laughs> oh, <right>. Jane Goodall, <laughs> by, J- by Jane Goodall, man, oh, the primatologist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy book, especially when like you, there's like a, it literally gets to a part where it just, it's just chimps fucking for yeah. like an entire chapter. Nice. You know? And Wait, it's they like, like describe it? Oh yeah, is it like an erotic novel? Dude, she's watching it happen. She's watching. It. She has to document, it. and she's like, "Oh yes, the female rump, you know, turns pink." Interesting. Yeah. Wow. It's it's crazy. It, like I literally like this was my face reading the book. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you feel like dirty, like you're yeah. looking at porn in church. You're like, yeah, Whoa. it's literally. I'm I'm. It's <laughs> like seven in the morning. I'm drinking a, I'm drinking coffee, and I'm like. <laughs> I'm like flinching as I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I'm flinching as I'm reading. This I'm is awkward, and why do I have a boner? This is so weird. <laughs> I'm flinching as I'm like reading the book, and it get it gets graphic too, man. Especially when you know, because they can be so violent. Oh yeah. 
Like, like literally, like there's a description of a female chimp going up to another female chimp and literally biting off her clitoris. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and I read that. I was like, wow. Like, holy shit. Don't go know? to that party. But, but I mean, it stands the reason of like, oh, you have these male chimps and they're literally the, the, the way the hierarchy works is number one, not just being able to oppose other male chimps, yeah. but literally being able to fuck whatever it is you want. Right. You know? And so back to Sapiens, they talk about in the book about how, you know, you know, hierarchy is established or especially, in, you know, ape culture and what we believe in the theory is, you know, past culture of man is the way you would, you know, assert dominance mm-hmm. is to literally be able to sleep around and fuck right. whoever it is you wanted. But now you have like something like you know, religion and Christianity and Catholicism and, you know, and the, the hierarchy, the males don't do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's really weird. It's very, very weird. Again, yeah. it poses a lot of questions. It just sits back to make you think of like, huh, why is that? Yeah. Why <laughs> is, why, why, why do they say like, oh, if you go and you want to be a priest and, you know, pastor or whatever, you can't have sex and everything like Cause that. Because you're and, married to God. If you're going to be fucking anybody, it's going to be God. <laughs> All right? I, I guess. <laughs> I mean, that's, to my knowledge, that's, that's, I mean, that's as far as I know it. I mean, I, I was born and raised Catholic, but I don't, obviously, as we talked about on the last Right, the one that the lost episode, literally the lost, lost episode. Um, <laughs> the lost. I have a couple lost episodes. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I, <clears throat> I believe in other things. You know, I, I, I have beliefs, and I'm strong in those beliefs. But I think you, if you're not um, open to different ideas, you're just doing yourself a disservice. You know what right. I mean? So, I almost feel like it's a security thing. Um, like for instance, with your example of people who are religious not wanting to read that book, it's like. Well, if you feel secure in your in your beliefs, you shouldn't have any problems reading that book, you know. Yeah, it's like it's like you know, do they think that reading the book is going to pierce some sort of veil, right. like some sort of ignorance? I think on a maybe even on the unconscious level, I think so. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Because well, because it's scary when you think about it. Like like I remember being I remember being a kid, and you know, again, same here. Like I was born and raised Catholic. Mm-hmm. And then there was one day where I had, like, it had to been, like, early elementary school where, like, mortality hit me. Oh, like, yeah. Like, that, that, like, fuck, what happens next? Yeah, there's happens- a reset button. Exactly, yep. you know? And I remember I started crying, and I was asking my mom, like, you know, I, I think what happened was, <laughs> no, this is what happened. <laughs> I, I remember. I, I remember now. Like, I was here, I was, I was at school. And it was like in second grade, and like this is when me and my friends like first started swearing and everything. We, okay. Like we'd be like it's a silent reading, and I look Leonardo, my friend, and I'd go, "Fuck!" <laughs> he'd look at me and he'd go, "The, the out of context swearing." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. And then I remember I went home, I went home and everything, and uh, like, like I mean, you you see like movies on TV, like fucking Christmas Story. I'm gonna put a bar of soap in your mouth or something, yeah. all these oh, naughty yeah. words and everything like that. And then. Uh, it, it literally hit me one day of like, can God hear what I'm saying in my head? <laughs> <laughs> All I'm doing is saying the F word. <laughs> I'm just saying the F word on loop. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like in my, in my, in my second grade, I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> it's such a fun word. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, can God hear that? <laughs> shit. You know? And then I'm like, out loud, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, God heard that. Then I go up to my mom. I'm like, can God hear what I'm saying in my head? <laughs> She's like, always. You're like, oh, fuck. Oh no! She's like, well, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, that doesn't help. Right. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I mean, but it just poses so many questions. I remember, like there, like there was one day, and like this is, I think this was in high school, where I was, like I was, I was, no, this is when this is after high school. My girlfriend at the time was in college, and she was doing her homework, and we were in her basement, and I fell asleep, like, watching a, like, I think I was watching Pulp Fiction or something. Okay. You know? And so, she was studying. I was watching a movie. And I remember I wake up, like, oh, 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 and she goes, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I'm like, I feel like I just saw the end of the universe. <laughs> you know? I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just going to watch Pulp Fiction, Bruce Willis. <laughs> Royale with cheese. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, no, like it, like it's been hitting me so much harder as of late. And again, reading, like reading that and in talking to friends that will like literally not, they like get pissed every time I bring up sapiens legitimately. Why? I don't, they're like, Oh, that dumb book. I'm like, I could literally say the same thing about the Bible, you fucking yeah, wizard. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. Yep. You know, whatever I mean. But I'm not gonna because, like, at the same time, I definitely feel like there has to be some sort 
of merit when it co- like because that came from somewhere. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. And whether it's like that long game of telephone, whether it's I mean, people think that people think that we're like we were given these stories by extraterrestrial beings. Yeah. You know, there's so many different avenues that right. where that could have come from. It's like again, it's the same thing with sapiens. I'm not gonna discredit anything unless unless I can definitely 100 110% feel like there's some sort of bias from an author. Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> right. Like it's easier to I guess to discredit, you know, parts in sapiens because the guy who wrote it is still fucking alive. Yeah. As opposed to the Bible where it's like we are so far removed from mm-hmm. the the creation of that book. Right. Where it's, you know, you can't really disprove it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I am with it. And I think that like to me, like, believe whatever the hell you want, just as long as it motivates you to be a good person and not judge other people, you know? I hate seeing people using religion. Or kill other people. Or kill other people, yeah. Because <laughs> like, there's some religions that, <laughs> which is crazy. Yeah. Watching the shit that's going on now, yeah. where people are, like, openly advocating for, like, genocide, mm-hmm. I'm like, whoa, have you seen the, and it's funny because their last name's fucking gay, <laughs> the Harvard president. What? You didn't know that? No. Dude, the Harvard president was on trial for, uh, they had her on trial for, um, like, um, they, they pretty much wanted her to say out loud, like, people advocating for genocide on her campus is wrong. I feel like, I didn't hear details, but I feel like I saw at yeah. the gym, like, a Harvard president something, and I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, she was on, um, see if you can look this up, Lucas, Harvard president trial or something. Um, but <clears throat> she was on, um, yeah, she was on trial for... You know, because kids on campus were pretty much, you know, They're advocating. Just walking down the sidewalk going, kill everybody if they don't agree with my yeah, values. Pretty much. Wow. And, um, wow. Defends his, uh, da, 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 da. Harvard won't be the last affected. Uh, Harvard president resigns over plagiarism allegations. That's weird. Why is Harvard <laughs> president being invested? Harvard's university's first black president stepped down after facing accusation of plagiarism, criticism of her response to anti Semitism on campus, a downfall in context. The fate of Harvard's president is the latest evidence. Of a deep crisis in American academic. I don't know how did this like, how did anti-Semitism? I was just gonna say come that come back into I the. I feel fold? like I did ha- vaguely hear something about this, and yeah. that's my like. How did this come back? How yeah. did this make a comeback? Like it's like doing, fucking jeans in the nineties. Yeah, jeans, man. Like doing it's coming back. I understand. Like everyone's trying to do remakes, but this is not a remake this, that this we is, need. Anti-Semitism. Reboot. Yeah, like let's keep that in the forties. Like holy shit. Yeah, because I know that reboot. they they say that like. Uh, Jews run Hollywood, which I could say Jews, by the way, because I'm part Jewish. But like, you know, there there's Jews run Hollywood, yeah. and like, and and yeah, just all this power and control. And my thoughts, like, <clears throat> it's not because they're Jewish; it's because they're assholes. There's no <laughs> like, that has nothing to do with the religion. Yeah. It's just because they're fucking although, psychopaths. Although them crawling, although like them crawling out of sewer grates in New York around all this shit happening did not help their case. <laughs> <laughs> like, guys, you could have like you could you should have waited. <laughs> Give it like at least a year for this shit to die down. Right, yeah, no shit. Yeah, before before coming out of the sewer grates in which could you imagine like living in an apartment in New York and you just hear fucking rituals underneath your your yeah, baseboards? Don't fuck that. <laughs> and then, and then so. some and then some guy in a yarmulke comes out of your fucking sink. <laughs> didn't didn't you hear about there was a guy who was claiming he was hearing that under yeah, his like apartment and stuff and they all said he was crazy and racist and shit. Yeah. And it was the yeah. exact building that they were under and actually yep. doing that. Wow. Yeah, cuz they're like building aren't they building like a isn't it like a tunnel system under New York? Which how is that safe? Huh. You know what I mean? There's like a in, whole bro. In, in case I haven't said it eight times, the I am so out of the loop. It's I not just, helping the bros. That's so crazy. It's not helping the bros because the Harvard Pre- if this came out around the Harvard Pre- people, oh uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, the Jews under the baseboards. What about them? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> could you, could you imagine? It's a wacky time. A it's secret a... tunnel in a New York City synagogue leads to a brawl between police and worshippers. Crazy. Dude, what's happening on? This I don't planet? get it. I don't get it. New York AP, a historic Brooklyn synagogue that serves as the center of an influential Has- Hasidic Jewish movement was trashed this week during an unusual community dispute that began with the discovery of a secret underground tunnel and ended in a brawl between worshippers and police. The conflict erupted in the global headquarters of the Shabbat uh, Lubavitch movement in Crown Heights, a deeply <laughs> revered Jewish site that each year receives thousands of visitors, including international students and religious... Okay, so they got into a brawl about the fucking... 
I know what's going. It's not. They're not building tunnels. The tunnels already there. There's a liquid river of goo, mm. like from Ghostbusters too. Remember that? They get yeah. angry, and that's yeah. exactly what's going on. Yeah, fucking that's Ninja crazy. Turtles are gonna be at the synagogue. Frequently visited Pornhub.com. Interesting. That's oh incredible. yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, we had to pull up a couple. Uh, you know. Mia Khalifa clips up here. Yeah, videos on that dick over there, which by no, the way, you, dude, uh, the dick. you said there was a story on <laughs> Yeah, that. so what's it called? Um, We're talking dicks. For everybody, we got this <laughs> it's a bottle opener. It's a bottle oh opener. my God, you're Go going to make me touch Go it. All right. I pranked my whole family with this, by the way. I said, hold out your hand, and I took a picture of them holding this <laughs> thing when they opened their <laughs> Open up your mouth. <laughs> 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 Take a picture. <laughs> what's it called? Um, <laughs> no, so our, our good buddy Keanu, he, last, I think it was last summer? He went to uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> Last summer he went to um, he went to Madeira, which is where I think that's where all the dicks go. Which is where all, all the best dicks go. Yeah, and, my dick's um, never been there. Well, what's it called? Uh, um, he has family that lives there, and when he came back, he came. Uh, I forgot what we what were we doing. I think we were gonna go see a comedy show, Shane Gillis, okay. in Detroit. And so I went to go pick him up, and he goes, "Hold on a second, hold on a second. So he comes back out, and he comes with gifts. Some of it was like I have some like what is it? He got me some fucking... I've got dick straws. I've got dick bottle openers. Like, what is this? Madeiran? Some sort of Madeiran Where, alcohol. where is that? Um, can you look up where Madeira... Show me, show me on, the, on the Michigan Mitt. On the Mitt Michigan Mitt, where, where Madeira is. <laughs> Madeira is M-A-D-E-I-R-A. Wait, it's not this in Madeira Michigan, wine. is it? No, 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 okay. no. This is a whole ass different country. You kept, you kept, you rolled with me on that joke, and I was like, wait a minute, is he serious? I think it's, uh, is it off the coast of Africa? Oh, uh, it looks like it is, Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's a small little island. Holy shit. And not a lot of room for nice dicks there. No. I get it. No, only the strong survive. Only the best of the best. Well, what's it called? He comes back and he hands me he hands me like the the drinks and then he hands me this wooden cock. <laughs> and I literally look at him and I go. And I tell him, like, you realize how like, did you know? I, I look at him and I, I literally tell him I like you realize how gay this is, right? <laughs> And he goes, hold on. He goes, he goes. I walked into his. I think he walked into a shop, and uh, I mean, it's handcrafted, which I'm like, the craftsmanship is, <laughs> you know, top notch, top yeah. tier craftsmanship. Oh, look at the veins in this thing. Nice. Yeah, the bell end. But what's it called? Um, <laughs> he told me. He goes. He saw that, and he goes. He goes. I knew I had to get it for you. And I go, why? He goes, because you're the biggest dick that I know. Have you told this story on the podcast? That I might really have. Familiar? I might have. He goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes. You're the biggest dickhead that I know. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, okay, thank you. Like I thank that. you. I get it. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. But yeah, we got fucking trinkets on the shelf now. Yeah. When did you guys put that up? We did this like a couple weeks ago. Nice. Well, I mean, the shelves like normally we have some other stuff like in the corner over there. I don't know if you see that. That's what's like normally up just for the the actual studio. Nice. Whenever we do this, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put all this shit up. Yeah, I got George Costanza on a fucking couch. <laughs> My brother got that for me as a birthday present. Dude, you should um, you should get like whenever you have guests on who are, who have memorabilia to put up there, mm-hmm. like put up when they come in. Be like, oh yeah, we just always have this out. It's just always decorated with your stuff. Dude, we love you yeah. so much. No, hundred <laughs> percent. Well, what's it called? Like um, like that's from my brother. Um, the, obviously the the Madeira stuff. That's from Keanu. Right. Um, the boombox. That's from Brookside Lane. Oh the, yeah. Like oh, yeah. I have a three D printed. You can check this out. I have a 3D printed helmet of the oh, wow. from Posterity. My buddy made that Lake Effect 3D printing. We're actually making um, figures. No shit. Yeah, That's I have cool. a, I have a contender from the next war at home, like the like just like the prototype. Yeah, it's fucking it's fucking sick. That's been, super cool. We've been working on this for months. Yeah, trying to trying to get the right thing. But this is this is a Louvre from from Paris. Mm. Like um, from the Louvre. Yeah, nice. my my sister and my dad went there. I want to say in 2019. And what's it called? My sister comes back. She goes, I got you a lube. And I go, you got me lube? A lube? A lube? And I'm like, what are you saying, Alexandra? What is it you're saying? <laughs> She's like, no, a lube. You're like, oh, I would rather yeah. have a lube. Thanks. And then I got, I mean, there's a, ton, there's a ton of stuff on here. I got like a little buddy bracelet. I and then like I Robert got Robert Langdon. Well, I got a little buddy bracelet and a thank you card from Charlotte Moretti and her friend Jillian who oh, are nice. doing the, um, they're doing their film Fairmount. Yeah. And I... I donated to the cause. Nice. I'm an investor. Nice. I'm an investor. Every, every once in a while, when, every once in a while, when I see her, I'm like, "How's my investment going? <laughs> How are my funds? Is everything on schedule? And Is everything task? on schedule? Yeah. That's cool. That's but cool um, but yeah, anytime anybody wants to come in here and drop something off, we'll throw it up there. I got um, one of our guests made a good point. We got to start throwing up some more of our own shit. Um, Dominic Lucci, who did the, I don't know if you remember his. Listen to his episode. Was he, he like d- two ago? Devaporized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, he did. He did his. Um, 
And afterwards, he's like, bro, you got to throw some of your shit up, like, on the walls and shit and everything, yeah. because he goes, I, he goes, when I, when I reached out to him, he's like, oh, yeah, like, I remember, like, I remember you and everything, but then yeah. when I look at the podcast, it's like, I don't, I wouldn't know what it is just yeah. by watching the podcast, and I'm like, oh, no, that's true. Yeah. That's true, because we had, like, the, the other wall paneling behind us for a bit, which was, like, a little bit more bare. It was like pretty. It was different blank. than this. Yeah, it was different than this. We changed it up for a bit, and I mean, wow. I won't lie, that was just me being a cheap ass because the other stuff was cheaper. And I looked at it on camera. I'm like, oh, it looks like shit. We gotta go. I wow, gotta I don't remember the, that at all. Yeah, I gotta go get the more expensive shit. Well, huh. the the lost episode of Scott was that background, right? This but with, one. But with we had it with and this then we one, went it was to the this. other one. But with and Scott, when when it was you and yeah. um Joe. Joe, it was the other one. Huh. Yeah. Go huh. back and look at that. One. Which, by the way, one of our clips we got. From that episode, one of the shorts got like fucking like a thousand views or something. Really? YouTube shorts. It was something like that. It was on huh. one of the platforms, TikTok, Instagram. I don't remember Making which it. one it is. Let's I'm go. getting recognized, dude. The algorithm is crazy, and I do yeah, not I'll fucking bet. understand it. What I'm gonna do after like a uh, like a, a a certain period of time is I'm gonna look at all the shorts we've made. And figure out okay what is making yeah. these ones stand. You sound out. like a producer right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, how dude, do we get more views? Exactly. Well, not hundred percent because yeah. it's like, um, I mean, it's the only way everybody's gonna see all our shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just gotta talk about transgenderism on every episode. That's Trans- right. Transgender. Transgender suck. Hashtag transgender. Get the fuck oh, yeah. out of here. There I'm you go. Kidding. That'll get the listens. Dude, the um, not a lot called? of fans, but you'll get listens. Oh, you'll get fans. No, we'll get fans for you'll sure. You'll get you'll get fans from the right. We'll we'll get fans for sure. I mean, I don't even think like uh, I th- I think a lot of people are just I don't even think you have to be right or left wing because I know some people that are more liberal than me. Yeah. That are just like. Right, I can't keep up with all that shit. Yeah, like they try, like Demi, like I think Demi Lovato even tried like the pronoun stuff for a while. Yeah, I think they are non-binary like, or gender fluid. Something no, like she, no, I'm pretty sure she went back to she because she says like it just got way. too... I tried, guys. I tried to. Fit she in. literally said like it, it, it got too. It was too exhausting because you have to like remind people. Yeah, you have to like tell people because when they go up to you and you're like, if you look like a girl, hello, ma'am. No, no, no! I'm not a ma'am. I'm actually this. I'm actually right. that. And it's like it's like way too fucking exhausting. Yeah. And it's like it feels like, like guys, let's get to work. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's get let's yeah. let's get to work. Let's stop trying to fucking figure out all this other bullshit that honestly did not matter ten years ago. Exactly. It did not matter ten years ago, which is even crazier that we can actually see like the inception of a culture. Mm-hmm. Like literally happened right before our eyes. Yeah, it's like Donald Trump got elected, and everybody went, <laughs> like went fucking. <laughs> Ow, my feelings went fucking nuts, and it's yeah. like you know, I mean, what like whatever. Yeah, that's a, uh, I I have a lot of opinions on it. It's crazy. I'm like, I'm like, do whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. But to mm-hmm. me, the, the 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 whole like, oh, like ask people their pronouns. I'm like. Okay, if I address you in a certain way, you're like, actually, I prefer this. I will do my damnedest to respect that, by mm-hmm. all means. Like, everybody just wants to be comfortable, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but at what point did, did we go, oh, your, your name's Brendan. Well, what's your nickname? Like, if I address mm-hmm. you as Brendan, you're like, actually, it's Skippy. What's your maiden name? What's your avatar? Yeah, like, if, if you want me to address you differently, then yeah. you tell me that. But I'm not going to make it my responsibility to make sure I don't hurt your feelings. Mm-hmm. And like you said, if you look like a woman, you're going to be addressed as such unless you mm-hmm. tell somebody otherwise. Yeah. And on top of it, I- I've had this conversation countless times with my wife. Like, people are like, oh, well, I like wearing dresses and having long hair and painting my nails, so I mm-hmm. must want to be a woman. And I'm like... Why does that have to be that? Why can't you just be a dude that likes wearing dresses mm-hmm. and having long hair and doing your nails? Mm-hmm. Like, why do you feel the need to go through gender reassignment surgery or even not to completely change mm-hmm. your identity without doing that and being like, well, you have to call me a woman. Like, I mean, I'll do that again, mm-hmm. by all means. If that's what you want me to do, yeah. I'm, I'm all for it. But like, yeah. who's to say what is a gender norm? Just yeah. fucking be you. Do what you want to do. You yeah. Know? By the way, this this episode is going to get a lot of views now. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it was funny. I was talking to Matt Nicholas on the phone like a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. He's like, "How the pod? He's like, "How the pod? How's the podcast going?" I'm like, "It's going good, man." He goes, "You guys say some wild fucking shit." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Yeah, man, but who cares? It's like that's us being genuine, you know. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I, I, I won't subscribe to some." I like. I would rather like. I think it's cool that people see filmmakers that are just normal people. Yeah, you know what I mean. And yep. you know, we're not gonna like if like if somebody. And it's hard because obviously we can't recreate what we recreated on the lost episode. Yeah. You know, because we had po- points where it was like, I see what you're saying, but I don't agree with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we can't, like, you just can't recreate, can't recreate that. It, yeah. You can't recreate that now. Without sounding artificial. Exactly. Yeah. But it's like, I feel like that's how it should be. Mm-hmm. Of like, 
Oh, that's interesting. I don't agree with it, but like that's interesting. We can walk away and still be friends, and you yeah, know, still that's how every of, conversation that's how it should should, go. should yeah. fucking go. Yeah. And um, but when it comes to like the gender stuff and everything like that, it's like even if even if somebody came up to me and was like, "Well, I want you to call me this," I'm gonna be like, "No, it's just <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. It's too yeah. much. It's like I'm not gonna play the mental fucking. <clears throat> I'm not gonna play the dumb mental game. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, like I had. Cause here's the thing too. It's, I think the the thing when it comes to being comfortable is a two way street. Yeah, I think it's a two way street, and I have firsthand experience with this. With um, there was there was a kid that me and him would hang out like all the time during the summer, um, when I was growing up, and I think he was uh, two or three years younger than me. But during the summertime, we could always meet up. We could always hang out, and it was mm-hmm. awesome. And then once, you know, you know, late middle school, early high school came around, obviously we weren't playing outside anymore, and, like, we wouldn't really hang out as much because, I mean, we weren't kids, you know? So fooling around outside in the summer becomes less appealing the more you grow up. Yeah. So, um, but I would see him, like, in school here and there. and be like, oh, what's up, man? What's up, man? And then, dude, this was, like, fucking, I think this was last summer where I walked into a hardware store, and I did like a double take. I was like, <laughs> "Bro, <laughs> I did not say that. I did not say that. <laughs> fucking, there's hammers and saws and sledgehammers in this fucking hardware store, Scott McClusky. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stand next to the tools of war <laughs> and initiate it. <laughs> What's it called? Um, no, like I like like he rang me out, you know, as you know, as I was checking, as I was checking out and. Like, he was clearly articulating his voice to sound mm-hmm. like a woman. He, you know, changed his hair. It was super like, long. And just like this guy I used to go to high school with. <laughs> no, no joke. And here, but here's, but this is what made it awkward. This is what made it awkward was there was clearly some sort of, there was, there was no cognitive dissonance in terms of, like, he had to have known who I was. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, and I clearly knew who he was. Yeah. And there was this weird sort of I know and you know moment yeah. <clears throat> happening at the same exact time. And it was just it was just way too much. And it was this weird elephant in the room. And I'm like, I am not going back there. Then I, <laughs> then I, then I get back home, put this thing together, and I'm like, fuck, I'm down like a screw. <laughs> and I got to go back. And that I got to go back. You know what I mean? And it's just it's just weird. How much do you, of this do you think is perpetuated by the Internet? A lot. Yeah. I, and I think that 90% of it is body dysmorphia. I yeah. think there is a small percentage mm. of people who are transgender who legitimately um, fit that box. Like, there are some transgender people that I've seen where I am genuinely surprised when they're like, oh, yeah, that person used to be, like, the opposite sex. I'm like, they fit the category then. Like, they're one of the few percentage where it's like, okay, you're, you, yours was a legitimate thing. But I think for 90% of people... In fact, probably even more. I would say 95% of people, they, <clears throat> excuse me, they just have body dysmorphia and they need a lot of therapy to mm-hmm. work through it. And again, by all means, like you're your own person. If you want to, mm-hmm. that that's the choice you want to take, like, mm-hmm. like do, you know, do you. But I think realistically, you're going to save yourself. Um, you're going to have a happier life mm-hmm. if you get therapy for your body dysmorphia. Do you think it's body dysmorphia or do you think that it's all... Because it definitely could be that. There's probably a good percentage of it being that. Mm-hmm. Or do you think a lot of it is just like sort of the expe- expectation of certain societal norms? And the reason why I bring this up is, so um, for Christmas, I got a lot of books. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the books that um, my parents got me, it was really my mom. Because she's like, oh, no, I saw this. I was like, I got to get this. I got to get this. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. is, uh, this book came in late. And I was literally eating dinner. And my mom comes up to me, she goes, oh, my gosh, this book came in. And I look at this book. And I literally look at her like this. <laughs> what was what, what, this supposed to mean? And the book is called The Will to Change by um, Bell Hooks. She's this female author. And I'm like, what are you trying to say about me, Alana? Yeah, right. And she goes, I'll, she goes, <laughs> I'll, she goes, I want you to read the book first. And I'll tell you why I got that for you when you're done reading the book. You know? Jump forward a little bit. I'm almost done with the book, and there's literally I'm literally reading this, going like, my mom did not read this book, <laughs> <laughs> and I do not know, I do not think, uh, 
you know, she a hundred percent understood yeah. <laughs> everything that's in this book. Like I get, like she told me she read like certain bits and pieces, which those bits and pieces I can literally pinpoint like, Oh, she read this. Yeah. That's why she got this for me. She got this. Cause the book starts out and you literally think you're about to read some sort of feminist propaganda, which I'm like, here we go. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> just what I needed. I'm like, here we go. But the book, and and it feels it feels stupid. Like I genuinely feel stupid. Like you like using the word like oh patriarchy, mm-hmm. you know, because it feels like and and she points it out in the book that a lot of people dismiss that word because it sounds ridiculous to say yeah. because that's toxic just, masculinity. Exa- essentially, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'll tell you what. This this book changed my whole uh, opinion on Barbie. Mm-hmm. Like I like mo- reading most of this book. I'm like, huh. Maybe that's what the movie's trying to say. Yeah. You know? And it completely made me do a 180 on Barbie, where at first I was like, is this propaganda? I don't know. I'm sitting next <laughs> to Ben Kowalski. <laughs> What's then, the conspiracy, Ben? Yeah. And then, and then you know, and then I read this book, and I'm like, huh. I think that, especially when you look at the Ken character, Ryan Gosling as Ken. Yeah. And, and especially knowing, like, Ryan Gosling has, like, like, nine times out of ten played these characters that are these silent stoic men yeah. that try that try not to express feelings or yeah. cannot express feelings especially in blade runner yeah when you see have you ever seen like the liter- literally me meme where it's him in I blade like runner talked about it before but i can't remember can, exactly what it looked like can you look up uh, literally me me oh look go go to youtube real quick yeah blade runner is a really slow burn that i think i'd have to watch it again to really appreciate Are you talking it about the original or 2049? 2049 i love that movie especially yeah. and again reading this book made me look at 2049 differently it was visually stunning you know and then i got to the end i was like that oh, was all right but i just feel like i need to be prepared for a slow burn to enjoy it look up this video search loneliness and madness i watch this video every once in a blue moon right there and then okay see the one with ryan gosling and brad that one right there Let's get some volume on Oh, this. in the meantime, would you like to sign up for Grammarly? This is our new program. <laughs> Always ads, I swear. Let's get some volume on this. Here, pause it real quick. Pause it. Uh, okay, there you go. Can you hear that? Yeah, I can hear it. You don't bring it through the headphones anymore? Are you sending it to the headphones, Lucas? I mean, I can hear it just fine. Yeah, is that coming from a like, computer? It's coming from that that speaker, right? Do you have it plugged in? You know, I don't think you have the the thing plugged in, the laptop plugged in. Mm. You hear it now? No, you gotta give us some pot it up. It's coming through. What? That's what I was just gonna. What? What are you saying? Uh, are you sure it's plugged into the right? Remember, switch the left and the right. Did you see the original? Yeah, it's not. I'm, I'm not a no. fan of it. Okay. No, I mean, switch the left and the, is it on left or right? Yeah, like that shot on the board. right there. It, that one with him walking. There we go. Oh, there it is. I can hear it now. Here, yeah, like go back. Shots, go back to the beginning. I don't know who was the cinematographer on this, but like, oh, Roger Deakins. Is that Roger Deakins? Yeah. Of course it is. Here, pot it up a little bit more for us. Yeah, like just a visually stunning movie. Yeah, I can hear it now. Oh, we'll keep potting it up a little bit if you can. Like, Ryan Gosling has become this sort of image of this dude who is, you know, completely severed from emotion. Yeah. And 5.5 million views a year ago. And so many dudes clearly relate to this sort of feeling yeah. that this sort of stuff yeah, that, yeah. emotes. Yeah, it's a brilliant shot. Brilliant shot. Yeah. It's going to cut to uh, American, American Psycho. Psycho yeah. yeah. That movie bummed me out, too. Because when you find out, you know, right. the spoiler alert in the end, I'm like, come on. Barriers to cross. It really bummed me out. All I have in common with the uncontrollable. But you've seen American Psycho become a trend, like in the past year and a half, two years. Uh, how do you mean? Like it's been, um, like it, like the memes. Uh, so many guys yeah. comment on it. I mean, that's good. That's good. We kind of, we kind of get it now. Let, let's go to the, um, let's go to the comments, because I think the comments on this video are pretty. So yeah, being alone for a while is dangerous. It's addicting. Once you see how peaceful it is, you don't want to deal with people anymore. Tom Hardy. 
a man dies when he's 30 but doesn't get buried until he's 80. Mm. Like, l- like, listen to all, of, like, read all of these existential comments that dudes are leaving. <laughs> like, there's clearly some sort of, there's clearly some sort of break happening in guys yeah. where they relate and seek out stuff like this. Like, like no one should be watching American Psycho and going, oh, I, I can relate to that feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or watching Blade Runner and going like, oh, I can relate to that. Yeah. You know, but people make these videos, they make these compilations, and they make memes out of it because clearly there's some sort of relatability to it. In reading the book I'm reading now, The Will to Change, um, the author touches on the reason why so many men nowadays are depressed is because, and again, like, I don't know, I don't know if the word patriarchy is used as just like, as like an identifier, mm-hmm. you know, like she needs something to identify, yeah. so she uses that word, right. or if she legitimately thinks it's, th- the source From is patriarchy, yeah, 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 yeah. but she says the reason why so many men are depressed nowadays is because there's this pressure to live up to mm-hmm. patriarchy, you know, yeah. there's, because patriarchy at its, at its root is, you know, for its, um, it means for men to dominate everything, mm-hmm. you know? Right. And if you're not dominating everything, if you're not, you know, the best at your job, if you're not the best, the most popular guy at school, if you're not the best when it comes to talking to girls, if you're right. not all this stuff, then it leads to, you know, feeling like Emotional this. Emotional unavailability. Exactly. Yeah. And so then, but it also talks about how, like, growing up, you know, how a lot of, you know, when you're a kid, you fear the father and everything because they are that patriarch, they are that, yeah. you know... um, you know, like, oh, don't tell dad and everything, you yeah. know, because you you fear the punishment and everything. Mm-hmm. And, and but you also get taught that, you know, you have to be emotionally cut off in order to be a man, in order to achieve, right. you know, um, being a man. And, you know, but there's this sort of weird paradox because women say that they want vulnerable men. Yeah. And, but then when men are vulnerable, women often, you he's know, needy or he's, he's a baby. needy because in, in he's it, a pussy. <laughs> well, cause in the book, in the book, the way she describes it. And again, it's coming from a woman. Yeah. She goes like out, she says, I was in a relationship with a man. And every time he would be vulnerable, she goes, it destroyed. And she says, even though I'm like a feminist and everything, it, it destroyed this image of, you know, of this strong male protector. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to be around it anymore. You know, and mm. so it's like, again, it's this weird paradox where it's, you know, how can how can the one who's supposed to protect you be weak? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I actually I I've had this conversation with my wife, actually, that um, <clears throat> to me, showing emotion as a man is a sign of true strength because mm-hmm. it is the norm to like you cannot show emotion. Yeah. So I think for you to be able to show emotion makes you stronger Mm -hmm. because then on top of it um it's almost like um it's like walking up a hill with 200 pound potato sacks on your arms Mm -hmm. and it's hard as fuck but the obvious and easy thing to do is just let the potatoes go and you can go up the hill. It's like mm-hmm. the same thing. That's a poor analogy, but it's the same thing with like no, emotions. It feels you know, like there's like an expectation that yeah. you have to live up to yeah. that honestly makes life even harder. Right. You exactly. Know what I mean? Like and unnecessarily harder. Right. And so when people are like, oh, well, he that's showing weakness if you're showing emotion. Like, well, no, because then you're getting those things off your chest mm-hmm. and now your mind's stronger because now you're sharper because now your focus isn't mm-hmm. on those things that are causing mm-hmm. those emotions. Yeah. Now you can hunt better. Mm-hmm. And, you know, evolutionarily speaking, mm-hmm. you know, even though that's yeah. not what they did. Well, I mean, you can kind of relate it to like filmmaking, you know, it's like, oh, you enter a film festival and say your film's like one of 10 movies in the festival, yeah. you know, and say you come in like second place, you know, you're probably going to be, most dudes are probably going to be pretty fucking butthurt yeah. that they got second <laughs> and not first, right. that they weren't the best, mm-hmm. you know? And so reading this book, it's like, huh, just uh, the constant urge to dominate everything is I think is what is destroying a lot of guys nowadays. Yeah. You know, and they can't live up to that. And I and, and she made a good point. She goes like, you know, maybe that's why we see so much terrible stuff happening like in schools with like school shootings and everything. You know, being these fucking dudes. Yeah. That again, watch a movie like Blade Runner, mm-hmm. American Psycho, and so, for some reason find relatability in that. Yeah. You know, and is it because there's a part of them and maybe and there, maybe it's more subconscious that they're realizing, like, oh, I can't live up to what a man is supposed to be. Yeah. So, um, and I'm not supposed to show emotion. 
And well, if you're going to bottle up all this emotion, it's going to come out in one way, shape or form. And, you know, odds are it's going to be anger. Right. You know, and rage. So maybe that's why we see so much terrible stuff happen in schools. Yeah. You know, which if that's the case, I don't I don't know how you amend it other than just by living life and doing it. You know uh, I mean? Parenting licenses for starters. No, That'll never sure. happen, but I think like. Oh, you, you think need, people should get a license you, if you You need parent? a license to fish, but you don't need a license to be a parent. Like, there's so many fucked up kids and people on the planet, and a lot of it has to do with the parents. Like, especially in today's <laughs> capitalism as a well oiled machine, when you have <laughs> both parents working. Yeah. So now you have to pawn off the kid that you've been mm-hmm. pressured by society to having when we're already overpopulated. And that's another argument. But now you're pawning that kid off on a daycare center. So you guys can both go to work just to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And now that kid doesn't have like the nuclear family upbringing. Like, yeah, okay. At the end of the day, you pick them up from the daycare and, and you know, you're, you're, you eat dinner as a family, maybe, which I don't even think is really a thing anymore either. Um, But then outside of that, you're putting them on a tablet where they're playing fucking Roblox with Mm -hmm. guns and, and which I'm not saying necessarily that um, violence in the media is what, is part of what causes all this because mm-hmm. I was exposed to a lot of that as a kid and not mm-hmm. once in my upbringing was I like, I'm in a bad mood. I want to shoot up to school, mm-hmm. you know? And, but I think, um, when there's no interactions barely mm-hmm. with the, with the rest of the family and you're just, you're isolating yourself to that environment. Yeah. Well, it's hard to know? become resilient when you don't have other people around you, you know right, what I mean? Exactly. To sort of bounce off of, you know right. what I mean? Like if you're in a family, like for example, me and my family, we riff on each other all the time. Yeah. You know? And so now if I'm out in public and somebody just, you know, pokes fun at me, I can, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I can laugh, you know? Right. But I remember, I remember I was in, I was in eighth grade and I was in algebra, which at the time, like to be in algebra was like to be a quote unquote advanced kid. Mm-hmm. Cause you weren't supposed to go to algebra until you were a freshman in high school. Okay. But there was like, you know, like 40 of us that were in algebra um, and across a couple different classes. And I remember like we sat in like desks kind of like this where it was like one, two, three, four, Mm -hmm. you know, and I remember um, like uh, I think in the first like 10 minutes of algebra, you know, we would have like a couple problems to solve on our own or with a table. Yeah. And I remember this one kid just looked up at me. Nick B, go fuck yourself, dude. <laughs> he looks up at me and he goes, he goes, you know, if there's one kid that's going to shoot up the school one day, it's going to be Brendan Shriver. And I remember, because I was a quiet kid. I had long hair, but I like, I didn't, I wasn't like an emo kid. Yeah. I was just like, I just kept to myself. You just kept to yourself, yeah. I just kept to myself, unless I was with my friends. Right. You know, because it was like, I could sniff out bullshit when I was even that young. I'm like, oh, if I was, if I was your friend, you know, and I did something you didn't like, you'd probably fucking excommunicate me from yeah. the entire fucking school. Right. You know what I mean? And he just said that. And I remember thinking to myself of like, I mean, I immediately thought of a joke, which I was like, I was like, yeah, I guess it's at the top of that list. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just made the list, buddy. Yeah. But what's it called? Um, No, I'm like in my head, I wasn't offended at the fact that he thought I was, I was that archetype. I was offended of just like, why would you say that to just a random like, what brought right. that, you know, like, out of the blue, you know? And the girl next to me, Madison, God bless you, Madison, she goes, like, Nick, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because yeah. this girl had known me since, like, kindergarten. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was, like, a genuinely, I was, like, a generally nice person, unless you were, like, a dick to me. Right. You know, I was, like, the kind of kid that, you know, I wasn't popular, but I kind of knew everybody. And um, I'm, like, if, if I was any other kid who didn't have the sort of riffraff with family, like you go home and banter and everything like that and expose that sort of ribbing. Yeah. You know, like, could you imagine saying that to a kid who goes home and all he does is hear their parents yell at each other? Right. All he does is hear how he's not good enough. Right. Um, you know, just has a complete, has a complete shitty self-esteem. Right. Could you imagine you say that and then, Next thing you know, you, you get are the, at the on the top of the list. Yeah. Next thing, <laughs> next thing you know, Madison's getting a text. Don't come to school tomorrow. Right. <laughs> yeah, no shit. You know, like fuck. Like that shit's real. Did that you? That shit's fucking real. Was that guy? Was that kid like known for kind of saying, making questionable comments like that? Like no, I just think he was just a dick. Up? I just think he was a dick. But he didn't do that often. Like he didn't. He didn't say shit that he probably shouldn't have often. 
I mean, he was like... I feel like that behavior is kind of like... He, I mean, he was like any other kid like him that just, you know, would randomly spout shit to just try to probably be funny. That's what I was... Yeah, either to be yeah. funny or to like to see what he can get away with, basically. You know? Yeah, I mean... Again, Nick B, go fuck yourself, dude. Fucking asshole. Yeah. Um, but what's it called? Um, I got a bottle open here for you. <laughs> yeah, dude, shove it up your ass. What's it called? Uh, no, like just... I don't get it. I really, don't, I really don't get it when it, when it comes to people that want to say that shit to other people. Cause, cause I think the argument everybody makes is like, oh well, they go home and they um they probably have a shitty life, and it's like, no, I don't really think so. I think again, it comes back to what I'm reading in this book of like, there's this urge to make it known that you're better. Yeah. Than especially when it comes to guys, mm-hmm. make it known that you're better than the other dude around you, whether right. it's conscious or subconscious. Right. Yeah, I think it's you know like I mean? an ego thing. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah. Had, I had the same exact thing happen to me when yeah. I was at Romeo High School too. Oh, <laughs> I gotta blurt that out. Well, <laughs> no, I went to. Well, no, you, we no, we, 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 we talked there. about Romeo. Yeah. Wait. So someone, someone walked up to the... you and told you that Brendan Schreiber looked like somebody who would shoot up the. School. <laughs> no, no, no. Fuck! I have a reputation. <laughs> no, we weren't at the school. I'm gonna at shoot the up the next time. film set. I'm on. They said that about me though. I'm just gonna go full Alec Baldwin. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> What's it called? Um, no, like it's just, yeah, it's definitely like an ego. It's definitely like a, like again, I think it goes back to that dominator sort of mentality. Are you sitting back now? Yeah, come back, back here just a little to bit. Chill back. Give it thirty yeah. seconds. I'll be back up there. Yeah, my lower back will hurt every once I'm in a fidgety. while. I'm but um, Twitch. yeah, it's pre- it's gonna be interesting to see what happens in the next like year. Because another thing too is I think when it comes to so many issues, I think it's just shit that we are bored. Yeah, and it's like definitely. we're constantly looking for validation. To fix. Yeah, some sort of validation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, especially like, like, um, I don't get the infatuation with everything that's going on in Israel and Palestine with people like just people in America. When you have like a train get derailed in Ohio, you have Hawaii, yeah, literally turn into a fucking raisin. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? You know what I mean? I do. I know. I know what's going on. Yeah. It's the shit that's happening, and then the elite's like, no, no, but look what's going on over, over there. Over here, it's like some weird distraction. Yeah. yeah. No. No, I, I understand what you're saying. I, I'm talking more of, like, just common people. Like, I don't get what their infatuation is with things extrinsic of themselves. Like, for example, when we had... um. This is more of an analogy, but when we had, you know, anti ghost Lucas's um brother's yeah, yeah, band yeah. on I'm Andrew. halfway through the episode right now. Well when when we had them come on, like one of the things we brought up is like, yeah, it's weird how like people on social media are so quick to share information, cool stuff that people that are completely extrinsic of their life. Yeah. What they're doing, you know what I mean? As opposed to like local artists that like maybe they know, right, we know, like cool stuff that we're all doing. Barely anybody shares that. Like I'll be on a film set, we'll make a movie. Like, half the fucking cast and crew will post the fact that, like, hey, this movie's out, Mm -hmm. it's premiering, here's the trailer. They'll post, like, next to none of the marketing. And it's like, guys, you all made this awesome thing, and you're not participating in getting it seen. Right. Guilty. You know? Yeah, you are guilty, motherfucker. I'm going to have to, like, put a clause in these goddamn memos and everything. The performance and participation clause. No, because honestly, like, for me... Facebook and all the social media for the most part, unfortunately, is just like a time waster. I don't have any Mm -hmm. that and like for finding film related things, Mm -hmm. you know, I just need to be more aware of like in those instances being like, like you said, like, oh, this is something to be proud of, like share it. And yeah. And, you know, so I I did when that awareness was there, you Mm -hmm. know, but it's just far too often not because I'll go into my Facebook Look at notifications. Scroll for like thirty seconds, and I'm like, like, "What, what the are fuck you am looking I doing? for? Yeah. Like, what, are, like, what is it? Your what are you instinctively looking for? Yeah. That you're just like, even it's, sometimes it feels like you don't even have the will. Right. You're just like, oh, this is a natural movement. It's like breathing. You're just yep. like, oh, I check this, check that. Da, 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 yeah, da, da. it is a natural movement. There's been times where I've been filling out something on paper, and then I go like this to the paper, and I'm like, that don't work on paper. No, That's it, in your yeah. phone, you idiot. <laughs> Get off the fucking phone. I hate it. Yeah, I hate it so much. No, it's um. I don't get what the what the infatuation is with things that just we don't fucking numb your brain. Yeah, yeah, we just don't have any fucking control over it. Yeah. It's like you rea- it's like you realize posting this on Instagram isn't gonna do a damn thing for what's happening. Right, you know, you know what I mean? Some fucking 
Palestinian child's gonna come up to you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pray like, for what? Paris. Oh, we feel better now. Thank like, you. Like, like I, like I think, um, I think recognizing how little impact you have on the world is also gonna make you happier. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then it's like, oh, now I can literally look at what it is I do have control over. Right. Like I have control over what it is I'm doing in my relationships in my work, mm-hmm. in my little bubble that I have. Right. You know? Um, but That's how I look at it. Yeah. I mean, it's... I mean, you, you said it best, really. You can't... There's a lot we can't control, but there are things that we can't control. Like, that's, that's why, like, for instance, the, the transgender thing, I'm like, mm-hmm. it doesn't affect me unless it's right in front of my face, and then mm-hmm. it still doesn't really affect me. Like, go, like the, the whole... The whole upset about whether transgender people can use whatever bathrooms. My thought is like, if I go into a bathroom and someone else comes in, I'm not wondering if they got a dick or a vagina. I don't think it's you know. I don't think it's about us wondering whether they have a dick or vagina. I think it really comes down to, cause like anything can be abused. Oh yeah, you know? absolutely. Because like, because here's the thing: it's you know, like that 100 percent will p- most likely be abused by predators, especially you know. Some someone looking to maybe no like if it can't happen I'm pretty sure it will happen you know what I mean like if like like oh all I have to do is pretend I'm a girl to go into the girl's bathroom and next thing you know like some little girl walks into the bathroom and you know I mean there's no I think it's it, just weird I think that's a matter of um, anecdote you know what I mean because sure. if you have someone who clearly looks like a dude and mm-hmm. he has like a wig on and maybe a dress and he's mm-hmm. going through all that just to like peep, you're going to pick up on it in that bathroom and then you're going to be like, I don't care if you... You're like, why does that woman do, have hairy legs? Yeah, I don't care if you do identify as that gender. Like, yeah. you're making everybody in this bathroom uncomfortable. You're not welcome. Yeah. But my point is more so that conversation shouldn't even have been a conversation because someone who looks the part, mm-hmm. someone who, like I've said, like looks like they're legitimately mm-hmm. part of the small percentage that that's actually a thing for them Mm -hmm. and they go into the opposite sex bathroom nobody's going to be any the wiser you know what i mean because sure they look like they they're playing the part you know what i mean sure but at the same time like and i don't know if it's just how you're saying it but like playing the part sounds manipulative yeah, like, like I agree. Hear, like, like, it's poor choice of words. Like, 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 yeah, like, hear, like hearing, like, oh, no, they can play the part well doesn't sell me on it. You know, you know what I mean? Because, like, the thing, too, is, you know, like, I don't think, like, when it comes to certain things, it's either all good or none of it's good. It's either all acceptable or none of it's acceptable. I don't think there can be exceptions for, well, they can play the part better than Here's some, my example. Hey, else, Lucas, you know? can you look up? I can't remember the full name. It's Buck something or something Buck. It's <laughs> a transgender. Buck. It's a Uncle transgender Buck. guy. Yeah. Um, he was a either current or former porn star, and also um, put, type in porn star too. It's a good thing we're signing out of our work email. <laughs> <laughs> now Buck Angel. Do... Just Buck go Angel. to images. Hopefully nothing. Uh, yeah, yeah. That that'll work better probably. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, go to images. I'm sure they all blur out. So this person used to be a woman. Mm. You're telling me that if that guy mm-hmm. walks into the women's bathroom because that's what his actual gender is, that's going to cause problems. Wait, you wait, know what wait, I mean? wait, wait, say that again? If, if he walked into the bathroom because of his actual... He, I believe, still has a vagina. I don't mm. think he went through gender reassignment surgery. Mm. That looks like a dude to me. No, it does. That dude walks into the mm-hmm. women's bathroom, there's probably going to be a lot of uncomfortable women in there. Mm-hmm. And so that's my point is that that dude walks into the men's bathroom. No mm. one's going to go, whoa, 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 hey, hey, hey. Right. Are you really a woman? So if we just don't <laughs> yeah. talk about it, right? and like 99% of the time, the people who walk into whatever bathroom it is, mm-hmm. there's not going to be an issue. The 1% that the, that the guy walks into the girl's bathroom and starts peeping, then we address mm-hmm. that and we go, hey, like you're obviously staring at all of us. Get mm-hmm. the fuck out of this bathroom. Right. Well, then maybe it's a matter of looking at the inception of the problem and like the actual root of it, because it's like, okay, we're having this conversation about the bathrooms and everything, which is a problem, but that's a problem that's stemming from something Something else. else. Absolutely. You know? And so it's like, okay, if we look at that, what is it? Which is clearly some sort of gender dysphoria. Yeah. Like, and I mean, I'll, you know, I know some people don't agree with it, but like, I think that it's a mental illness. 
Like I like I genuinely do. Like yeah. that's why I read that part in Sapiens and mm-hmm. I go, oh, this is just bullshit. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, you can. I 100% agree. Like like we talked about earlier. If like if you're a dude and you want to wear a fucking dress, yeah. Okay. Right. You know. I mean, I think it's. I think it's weird. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I think it's weird. But so yeah. does. A dude wearing a dress with a beard saying that he's a woman. Yeah. That's weird, too. No, 100%. Like, my 100%. thing is, like, just be secure with yourself and fucking own it. Yeah. You know? That's to me, is, like, the, the most important thing. You're going to get looks. For sure. But here's the thing. It's like, okay, if he, like, I also think it's, I don't think it's society's responsibility to necessarily cradle certain expectations like someone, like, like you know, originally a girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So if she, okay, transforms herself into a man Mm -hmm. i think she has to be self-aware enough to be like you know what i mean it looks like they're doing q a's and shit there was one photo probably like i saw anyway talking talking about it like she has to be self-aware enough to be like you know what i know i'm in a minority in terms of thinking that this is right Mm -hmm. most people probably think this is wrong most people probably think it's pretty uncomfortable if i have a vagina um, and I walk into a woman's bathroom, people are probably going to raise their eyebrows. So, like, yeah. a little bit of social awareness, too. Yeah. Of, like, you're free to make every choice you want. Mm-hmm. However, every choice has a consequence. Right. And consequences, I don't think, have to necessarily inherently be bad. Yeah. Some can be good, you know? Like, a consequence could be, like, wow, I actually feel like how... I actually look like how I feel. Mm-hmm. You know? That could be a positive one. Yeah. But a negative one would be, like, but I know... Not everybody else thinks like I do. Yeah. And I know that in a social setting, you know, I know I'm probably going to raise eyebrows and I know I'm probably going to make people feel uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, and so, um, like, the journey to feel comfortable when it comes to how it is you look. I mean, the same thing goes for fucking people that get plastic surgery and, like, mm-hmm. fillers and shit. Like, you look at someone and they look like E.T., you're going to go, oh. Yeah, huh. right. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's going to be this natural, like, what is that? Right. And they're like, but I feel yeah. good. Like, good. That's great. That's but awesome. You, but you look like fucking yeah. you walked out of like Chernobyl, hell. man. Yeah. Yep. And, exactly. um, you know, so I mean, it, it doesn't just stem, just, just narrow down to transgenders and everything like right. that. Like, yeah, any, yeah. any sort of, like, I'll see dudes that are, go- like, tattooed head to toe, and I'm mm-hmm. like, whoa. Yeah. That is crazy. Like I'm, I'm staring at you because you're an enigma. Like right. what? Like what is that? I'm not used right. to seeing that. Like it's, it's crazy. And so, um, no. When it, when it comes to the bathroom situation, I think that really falls on the responsibility of whoever it is that wants to make that decision. Yeah. Of you know, and I'm gonna do this, you know, and I know that I might feel comfortable but I know that other people aren't going to feel comfortable. Yeah. And I think, you again, you have to look at it through the lens of children. Not Like, we're all adults and everything. Like, for example, if I was an adult and that dude walked in, into my bathroom at, at, you know, the movies, wherever I'm at, I'd probably go, uh, yeah, you know. I find out later on that he was a girl, I'd be like, whoa, really? What? Well, that's right. crazy. Didn't belong in my bathroom. Well, no, I wouldn't think that. I'd be like, well, that's fucking fooled me. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah what exactly. The? I'd be like, what the fuck? Holy right. shit. But like again, through the lens of kids, I think that I think kids are asking way too complicated of questions at such a younger age now. I agree with that definitely, hundred percent. You know what I mean? Because I remember, I remember being young and the most like I think, and like you see it in TV shows. You know, like like my mom is on a fucking This Is Us binge. Okay. And you know what I mean? Like you know the show, right? Yeah, yeah. I never watched it, but I'm familiar with it. Well, like you know the the family adopts you know a black kid and everything and. Adopting a black kid in a white family, obviously, you know, people ask questions, and yeah. especially especially the kid. Right. And so I mean, I'm like watching this episode and I'm like, oh, I can remember like discussions like that of how come so so and so looks differently yeah. than I do. And I think that is the most basic, complicated question yeah. a kid should ask. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I don't think that these sort of existential questions about like, you know, who am I and mm-hmm. everything like like I just think it's I think kids are asking way too many complicated questions yeah, abstract questions that you don't need to know yet exactly well especially yeah. since it's so new right nobody really has the answers and especially because yeah. it's so new you can see when people are starting to like make up bullshit like for example when like you ask <laughs> how many genders there are they're like well you know it's it's infinite and yeah. you're like what you know, it's like there's so much in life that is quantifiable. Yeah. And you're telling me that gender isn't like, how do we identify? Like, literally, look at Jurassic Park. 
you know, how do you know all the dinosaurs are female? What do you go around the park lifting up all the dinosaur skirts? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you just ask. Exactly. Well, what are yeah. your pronouns? Velociraptor. It's, it's 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 way too. It's way too much, man. And I worry about. I worry about the kids. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I'll tell you what. It is funny, like, because my brother, he's in, he's a freshman in high school, and I mean, he's sort of had to. He's been in like the metamorphosis of all this stuff being implemented in schools and everything. Mm-hmm. And he'll come home and he'll be like, "You'll never believe the bubble shit I fucking heard today." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and it's even it's even weirder hearing it from like, um, like teachers' perspectives, because mm-hmm. like I have a like I have a I have a neighbor who's a teacher, and um, you know, she's like, it's just crazy. Yeah. You know, it's like this weird mental gymnastics you know and it's um it feels like some it feel again it feels like another distraction that we're giving ourselves yeah you know you know what i mean yeah and a lot of people think it's fucking china and russia that are putting it on our fucking phones and are making our kids is that, think this is way. that ben telling you that no this is no <laughs> this is literally fucking shit i hear on podcasts yeah i think you know? uh it's a good theory it's it's hard enough being a kid and just to add that element mm-hmm. into it which on top of it when like hearing that you know p- they're giving hormone therapy to like seven to nine oh that's I'm way like, too much they're man. not if you can't if you can't drink till you're 21 if you can't smoke yeah if you can't do all of these things till you're 18 or 21 right. all this new bullshit that again it's like fucking i was just about to say it's like the covid vaccine but i don't i don't know if I could. yeah it's let's like get, it's let's like go. it's like the co- right it's, like, it's like the covid vaccine like you don't know 110 percent the repercussions yeah you don't have Hasn't decades met... of peer-reviewed studies exactly. to figure out what happens so long term exactly. so it's like why are you just gonna go ahead and say fuck it go ahead because the it. government told us and we can trust no, them right? no 100 percent. like i get i get that angle, the sentiment like, right. i'm talking about just the public of like oh yeah you know it hasn't been like it clearly hasn't been tested this stuff hasn't been proven mm-hmm. when you're looking at the gender stuff it like literally you could, it's 2016 mm-hmm. it's literally 2015 2016 when all this shit crept up if yeah. you can pinpoint the year okay and you can see how new it is it's not even a decade old all this right. another other bullshit that's popping up it's like how can you validly say like this is the cure take this you right. know take this take this one pill and whatever it is right. or take this shot take this vaccine do this therapy it it just hasn't be hasn't been tested and, and proven and everything. And I mean, a lot of people that you know, I've I've heard of people that go through gender reassignment surgery and afterwards regret it, regret it, and they are just as miserable. Yep. And there's no going back. Yeah. You know, what I mean, there's no going back. Um. So it's just. I think it speaks to something that I think you and I talked about on the last episode about um, this intrinsic. Um, need to find happiness and yeah. not being content with yeah. just being content. Right. And so people are always more. trying to find a thing and be like, well, this is going to make me happy. Mm-hmm. Just like with ADHD, like I thought I had ADHD and then I went mm-hmm. and got a psyche valve and they were like, no, it's just basically those behaviors are induced by anxiety. So it's mm-hmm. not actually ADHD. But then you have all of these prescriptions for mm-hmm. Ritalin and Adderall for mm-hmm. people who don't actually have ADHD but it's just a trend. And it's the same thing right. with the transgenderism that a lot of people are just like, oh, well, maybe this thing will make me happy. Mm-hmm. So let me go to the extreme and do all these things because then I'll feel like I'm being serious about it mm-hmm. if I go to the extreme on it. And then like you said, there are a lot of people who are happy, but there's also a lot of people who mm-hmm. do regret it after they go through it. And especially if you're introducing yeah. it at the age of seven or nine or whatever it is, like these kids don't, gender isn't an idea for them yet until you mm-hmm. finally hit puberty and the hormones are going and then you're like, wait, what the fuck? Wait, I can do more than just pee out of this thing? Like, what's <laughs> going on, you know? <laughs> and so yeah. when you're, like, for instance, my nephew, um, yeah. when he was, I don't know, three or four, I remember I was visiting um, my brother and he came running down the stairs in a fucking dress. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's interesting. Like, that's, <laughs> that's cute. I was like, why are you wearing a dress? He's like, I just like the way it feels when I twirl around. I'm like, Oh, so it has nothing to do with your gender. You're not like, I want to be a girl. You're like, this feels cool, and Mm -hmm. I want to wear it. But then other parents would look at it, and they'll go, oh, oh, honey, do you want to be a girl? Is that? And then you're putting the thought in their head, and they're like, oh, maybe I do. If I like wearing dresses, like, maybe I want to be a girl. Yeah. And it's just totally. It's crazy seeing, like, parents that are advocating for it. Like, they want their kid to be that, you know, that outlier, which isn't really an outlier anymore. Yeah, that part's frustrating, for sure. Yeah, because it's, um... And again, I don't know what it is. I genuinely don't don't know what it what it really is. Who you knows? Know? 
But I, that was go ahead. Well, no, I th- I think it, you know we kind of touched on it. You know, not being satisfied yeah. with what you know we just have. Yeah. You know, and I think it also stems to just like um. Like I tiptoe around the word like depression a lot because I'm like I feel like, you know, being present. And just realizing life's pretty fucking good. Yeah, I'm not chilling on the Gaza Strip right now. We're right. like a little buddy companion. Yeah, you know, <laughs> shooting shooting the shit with Scott McCluskey. Like, yeah. what's there to complain about? Right. Like, like I was talking to a friend, you know, a, you know, a couple of weeks ago who's pretty, you know, just down on himself. And I go, I go, dude, fuck around. And we got breakfast. Yeah. I'm like, we're in this small town, which is awesome. Uh, we're having breakfast. You're chilling with, you know, one of your bros that you've known for like almost a decade now. It's like, well, what's what's there to complain about? You know, just look at the situation. Like it's people that have it so much fucking worse. Yeah. Than than what we have now. You know. I think two notes on that point. I think, I think happiness is relative. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like for instance, somebody. Somebody might want fame. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like somebody who's somebody who is famous and owns like a private jet, and uh-huh. then they come into money troubles and they have to get rid of that private jet. Now they can only fly first class on their airplane. Like, yeah, to you and me, we're like, oh, yeah, you poor fucking thing. But to yeah. him, like, that's your norm. He's desensitized and then you, to it, right. yeah. So I think, it's, I think it's relative. But then also I think that, um, I think when you're conditioned growing up to feel depressed, mm-hmm. that happiness almost makes you uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I think, um, and I think I'm a, I don't, Victim's the wrong word. I think I'm guilty of this at times um, because I struggled with depression for so long that Mm -hmm. I think that I'm mostly out of it. But I think there are times where um, I'd almost feel better um, enjoying is not the right word, but um, experiencing the negative emotions, you know, because my wife all the time will try to, you know, bolster me when I'm feeling down. I'm just like. Yeah, but I'm feeling the feelings. You know what I mean? Like, I almost feel like it would be uncomfortable for me. Yeah, to be like, all right, well, yeah, no, it's it's not so bad. It's like it's a it's kind of a process to to digest those feelings. Well, yeah, and then, like sever. And again, it goes back to that book. What I was saying earlier, like completely severing yourself of your feelings. Yeah, that's not the way to 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 be happy. Right. There, there was oh, and I forget. Uh it was some sort of like she references like some sort of african tribe in the book and i i don't know if the, the, the there's a word called the mawari or something like that mm. I, I, for, I forget the exact terminology but um she pulled like a piece from this book and the author had asked like this warrior of this tribe you know what what does it take to be like a great warrior and he says i'm not going to tell you what it takes to be a great warrior i'll tell you what it takes to be a good one and it's like knowing and recognizing when you know um you can uh, you're you're strong enough to jump into action, also knowing when not to. Yeah, you know at the same time, and I think just again, it, it, you just have to be in touch with your your feelings and how you, how you feel and everything like that. Yeah, you know, and I think a lot of, and again, I think like you know, even though it's a fucking meme, like the Ryan Gosling <laughs> literally meme, meme like yeah. perpetuates that feeling of like, I am depressed. Yeah. I am like this, and people yeah. are just accepting like this is who I am. This literally is literally me. me. <laughs> yeah, dude. But um, but what's it called? I gotta, I gotta get going. I got some financial shit I gotta do at two oh, o'clock. Cool. Yeah. But nice. what's it called? This was fucking wow. awesome, dude. Yeah. This one went by quick, really fast. Yeah. I know. I looked up <laughs> yeah. at the clock at, and I think it was one, and I was like, "What? It's yeah, been like twenty minutes." Yeah, dude. But um, anytime, anytime, because like we didn't even like we barely scratched the surface of yeah. what we fucking talked about last time, dude. Yeah. Anytime you want to come on and you're like, I got something to talk about, you let me know. We'll make it happen, man. I probably will. Uh, I feel like there was, I'll probably want to after Oppenheimer. And then after I read Sapiens, I'll probably want to come back on. Well, dude. And then when, uh, when we see, um, Civil, Civil War, War yeah. dude, we're going to real quick, look up, uh, the pussy hats, pink pussy hats. Oh yeah, please do. <laughs> look up pink pussy hats. This is what we're going to wear for, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have not seen these. This is what the feminists wear uh, for the thing. So I'm like, oh, it'd be so funny if we went to this movie dressed up in like oh half God. camouflage. And then do the we pussy have to hats. tuck our wieners too? We might. I have to. It's just too big, so I have to. I don't. I don't shop at Target anymore because <laughs> of all that shit. Because you what? You didn't know this about oh, Target? Oh, the whole yeah. yeah, yeah. Was like, again, it's, saying, it's like you're coming at kids, bro. I it's thought like you were saying that like they encourage you to tuck your wiener and you don't go to Target for that reason. I'm like, that's all right. I do. No, but I mean, like when they let that shit in fucking Target when it came to the fucking kid. Anytime it touches the kids, I'm like, that's that's where I draw the line. Yeah, that's, that's where I draw. Yeah, the line. that's kind of how I am. So, but dude, yeah. Scott, 
it was awesome having you on, man. Yeah. Like I said, anytime you want to come on, you let me know. We'll make it happen. We'll bump somebody. I don't give a fuck. Perfect. Damn. You know? I mean, I, I mean, I'll. I'll wait my turn, but yeah. Dude, I'm, if you're reading Sapiens, we gotta talk about Sapiens. Yeah, I don't care who the fuck's coming on. We gotta talk about Sapiens. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, it's it's eventual. I mean, I like I said, I'm I got other projects I'm working on. The one that you probably don't remember, I'll tell you off off the podcast. But it was um, it was after we saw The Exorcist, so I like bought some books basically on research mm. for that that I have to read, and then um, I also am working on finally getting the director's notebook out, like. Mm-hmm. I'm like trying to set aside time because I have your episode edited. I just need to roll <laughs> credits and then I have yeah. to have you sign like whatever forms and shit. And then I want you to obviously watch it. Wait, what I forms do you want me to sign? Just basically like, yeah. Veronica, fuck you, Tamara. Regular you? legal shit, you know. The, I need to mostly fine. do it for practice, honestly. Just to make oh. sure that, you know, just, uh, no. Yeah, I don't expect, I don't expect five years from now for you to be like, I'm suing because this is, I'm, I'm triggered right now. Well, I mean, but. like, if someone willingly sits on your podcast and is, like, talking to you. Right. I feel like it kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. You know? But anyway, yeah. Scotty, anytime you want to come on, you let me know. Perfect. I'll be here. All right. Thanks, guys, for listening. Watch our films with Snorkast. We'll see you guys. See you.